This is an HP Elite book, in a totally great shape, but with several issues. Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew, and in this video we're gonna back in function this laptop, make some upgrades and backup data from a stuck hard disk. This is about a 10 years old laptop, and considering its age is in a very good cosmetic condition, but there are a few problems. Also, these problems become after the laptop was accidentally dropped while it was turned on. And now, the laptop sometimes is turning on normally, but sometimes a black screen appears. But even when the laptop starts, then it's freezing after the boot logo. The other problem is the hard disk. From the hard disk I can hear clicking noise. And this is how it sounds. Well, let's start. Back this laptop in function again and make it better. First I started with searching from where the problem is coming. First I removed the hard disk, because damaged hard disk may cause some problems like this one. But again I have the same problem, the black screen. Now I move to check the RAM. The blinking LED indicators assuming that something is preventing the startup. Now I remove one of the RAM models and the laptop started working. Actually, this is usual when the laptop is dropped while it's turned on. In the most of cases, the hard disk may be stuck, but sometimes the other components may fail. The specs of the laptops are pretty low. Now, the laptop lasts with 2 gigs of RAM only. The CPU is Intel Core i3, and the GPU is 512 megabytes NVIDIA Quadro. But however, I'm gonna do some changes later. Now, first I will start with disassembling, because I need to clean the laptop from the inside and make some changes. Well, basically this is it. Generally, this laptop is pretty clean and there's no a lot of dust. But however, now I'm gonna cross over the cleaning process and remove even the tiniest dust. Also, to clean the laptop I will use a soft brush, small vacuum cleaner, cotton buds and pure alcohol. Well, now the laptop is clean from the inside and now let's move on cleaning the cooling fan and the heatsink from dust and the old thermal paste. Well, basically this is it. The cooling fan and the heatsink are looking almost like a new. Now I will move on cleaning the keyboard. At first, maybe the keyboard looks clean, but actually is not. There is a lot of dust around and under the keys. Well, and this is the keyboard. It's looking almost like a new. Now let's move on the next level, and that is cleaning the bezel around the display and the display. When I'm on the part with the display, I must say a few things. If you're going to clean some display, be careful. 
Do not press hard, because you may break the display, and do not let any kind of liquid to pass over the display corners and enter the inside, because the liquid may damage the entire display. Also to clean the display I will use a few soft cleaning clothes, 96% alcohol but mixed with anti-static glass cleaner, one normal soft brush and one very soft makeup brush. And after all, this is the final result. The display is shining again. Well, and as the last part about cleaning, I continue with cleaning the case from the outside. Well, basically everything is done with cleaning, and the laptop is shining again. Now it's time to move on some upgrades. The first part is gonna be the CPU. Instead of using the Intel Core i3, I will go with Intel Core i7-620M. Probably this model can support something better and faster, but this CPU I found it for very cheap. I got it for 10 euros, or that's about 11 US dollars. But also, I don't want to risk and get some unsupported CPU, because some of these elite book models are coming with Intel i7-640M or 620M, I was pretty sure that this CPU will work on this laptop. Well, after done with the CPU, let's move on the RAM. As RAM, I will use 8 gigs in total. Probably you will ask, what's about a more RAM? Actually, I try to go with 12 gigs, but the laptop is not working. Even I try single 8 gigs RAM, but no success. Actually, in this case, the 8 gigs is maximum. Two RAMs with 4 gigs each. Well, and the last part is the SSD. At first I want to go with some lower capacity Kingston SSD, but I received something new, a 480 gigs Eco SSD. This is a budget SSD, and the performance are a little bit lower than the Kingston SSD, but basically it's not bad at all, and it's good for the value. Well. After all is finished with the laptop, I continue with installing Windows, Windows drivers, and basic applications and softwares. But now I had to do one more thing. To pull the data from the old and stuck hard disk. The disk has a clicking noise, but when I connect the disk on the laptop, the disk is recognized, which is very important, but it shows one partition only. In this case, the chances are large to back up the data. This process requests to open the disk and manually release the disk needle. Also, the disk must be open in almost perfect clean conditions. First, I clean my desk from a dust and I wash the rubber which mostly I'm using while I do repairs. Also want to say, this is a one-way ticket and no return back, and the risk for losing all data is high. Even if the disk starts working, then I need to back up the data immediately. Because after, if I put the disk under some very small stress, the disk may stuck again or totally die. Well, at this point, I need to be a very careful and very gentle to not scratch the disk or damage the disk needle. Also, if you're going to make something like this, do not touch the disk from the inside or any other components, because here it's very easy to cause some additional damage. Well, now the disk needle is released and I think everything is ok.
Well, the disk is fully recognized, it, the reading was pretty slow, and the disk is working very slow and the disk partitions are flipped. The C drive is showing as system reserved, system reserve is C or D, but actually that doesn't really matter. The important thing is I can pull all data from the disk. Well, after all is finished, let's move to the performance. Basically, we cannot expect a lot from this laptop, like from some latest models. But with the upgrades that I've done previously, this laptop is working pretty fine. It's pretty fast and it's perfect for basics. It's great for watching movies, listening to music. Actually, it is a great media center. Also, it's great for web browsing and doing all basic daily tasks. And I got a very surprised when I tried to watch a 4K videos. The 4K is fully playable and without any logs. The battery is still keeping well, which is very surprising. And generally, the entire laptop is in a great cosmetic condition. I think this laptop will be great, even in the next couple of years, but for the basics only. Because this laptop has 512MB NVIDIA Quadro GPU, I cannot expect a lot in gaming area. The older games that are with lower requirements are running pretty well. Also, I try to go with something heavier, like Battlefield 3, and this game is running pretty slow, but is much better than I expected. The frame rate is about 15 to 20, using all minimum settings and HD resolution. Also, while the gameplay, the frame rate was pretty stable, and I didn't have any issues like crashing or freezing. While I make all of these tests, the temperatures are fine and very normal. The i7 CPU is working just fine and without any problems. Well, basically this is all about this laptop. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give some ideas to make some touch functional again. Also, if you want to support me to grow this channel, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.